What's going on everybody? This is FHRC Brony, Ready Control and Cars, and I know you can't see my face, but here you guys can see me. And you guys might hear cars passing by because I'm actually in a not really busy um, res residential area, but there are, there are some cars that are going to be passing by uh, every now and then in this video. So if you guys hear that, I'm sorry. That's all I can do. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my 1995 Toyota 4Runner, which is this car right here that I'm standing right next to. But... I'm not gonna go ahead and talk about the Toria, that will be in a later video. I'm gonna be talking about this engine over here, which is the three liter V6. And some people actually want, want to talk about like this thing having known, being known for having head gasket failures. And I can tell you this right now, spoiler alert, I've actually have not had that kind of problem ever since I got this car uh, two years ago. And am I going to say that it's going to blow head gaskets? Maybe, but I don't know. Um, but I don't think it's going to happen because I really take good care of this car, actually. I really do. Uh, it's just my AC is the only issue. Anyways, let's go talk about this engine as, as what it is. This is a three liter V6 electronic fuel injection which is the EFI. You might not see it, but it says three liter V6 EFI and electronic fuel injection is what the EFI stands for. Um, this engine has been around in the 4Runner and the Toyota, to uh, Toyota pickup, which is basically the early name for the Toyota truck before it became the Tacoma. Um, this engine has been around since the 1980s, actually. So this has actually been here in the first since the first generation Toyota 4Runner, which actually came, I believe, back in 1980, 19, early 80s, I believe, 1984, 1985, somewhere around there. But I know it's in the 80s. But uh, this engine has been around since then till 1995, where Toyota actually changed the 4Runner's engine to the 3.0 V, no, not 3.0, 3.4 liter V6 codename 5VZFE. This one is a 3VZE. So this engine is 0.4 liters smaller than the 3.4. So this engine produces about 150 horsepower. And I know what you guys are thinking. That is pretty darn, pretty darn underpowered for, for an engine like this. Yes, it is true. But also keep in mind that the four cylinders counterpart of this this car's four-cylinder counterpart, which is the 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder, codenamed 22RE, makes only 116 horsepower. That's right, 116. This one makes 150 horsepower, 150. That might not be a huge power increase, but this is actually slightly faster and a little bit more powerful, not faster, but a little bit more powerful then the 22RE. So this is this is actually okay for this car. The 22RE is a lot more underpowered in my opinion. Even though I never driven a 4Runner or a Toyota pickup with with a 22RE, I based on other people's experience and also its power output numbers, it's not really the greatest thing. Not saying that the 22RE is a bad engine, it's just it could be improved upon. Same thing with this engine. I personally believe that this engine might be the most underpowered engine in Toyota's lineup, but I personally think for this kind of car, for for the car this heavy, like the 4Runner, I personally think a little bit more power should do the, should do the trick. Maybe at least 170 horsepower, at least 170 or maybe 180, it would do okay. 150 is kind of underpowered. And another complaint that a lot of people want to talk about in this car is head gasket failures. And yes, the 3VZE is actually notorious for blowing head gaskets. Now, I personally believe two things. Either one, the main owner of this car is not taking good care of it. All he or she is just doing is just getting in the car and drive it and don't even have a care in the world. Or if the new person who wants to buy this 4Runner use, but the pri and and the engine has already had a head gasket failure once he or she, the new owner, bought it, then the previous owner wasn't taking good care of it. Which kind of I might sound I might contradict myself because I already said 
the second uh, claim that I was saying kind of kind of goes back to my first claim but you get what I mean because uh, there's a lot of people I've talked in a forerunner group that I'm in that's saying that oh I got my I got my forerunner with a blown head gasket already so yes the pr previous owner wasn't really taking good care of this car but I might be wrong uh, some people have different experiences some people might say oh I take good care of it but it's still blowing head gaskets then that's probably just a manufacturing defect that you have and Toyota did recall it I believe Toyota uh, did recall this kind of engine we're having those kind of failures but um, just keep in mind this has been around since the 80s so if when the Toyota Foreigner as a came out as a standard SUV in 1991 or excuse me 19, 1990 to 1995 which this car has uh, actually is around uh, this is a second generation if you're if you're wondering which is actually from 1990 to 1995 um, as I said before this has actually been around this engine has been around since the 80s so this has been in the first generation forerunner so I personally think that when this car came out my personal um, personal belief I think the head gaskets are, uh, are failing on this car is the engine is so underpowered that when you do have when you try to put a lot more stress in it it does blow head gaskets because when this generation foreigner has been around uh, since the 1990s and all the way up to 1995 uh, it, it was kind of a heavier car than the first generation foreigner personally I think I forgot to actually check the numbers out but I think the this one is a little bit heavier than the first gen forerunner because you can actually take the the back uh, uh, the back section of the car uh, on the first generation forerunner and take the rear roof out and you it's much lighter that's my personal belief this one is a standard SUV with with a uh, with a roof all the, with a hard top roof all the way across not removable none of that so it's kind of a little bit heavy and that's why a lot of people complain about this car sagging in the back because this is actually based on the Toyota Hilux pickup truck uh, chassis which couldn't stand that extra weight so probably that's one of the reasons I personally think that's one of the reasons why this engine has been known to blowing head gaskets if I'm wrong let me know but but the real question is have I suffered a blown head gasket in this exact same engine as a lot of the forerunner and Toyota pickup owners have with this exact same engine has been suffering the answer to that is a plain and simple no and I'm not saying that everybody I'm not saying everybody suffered a blown head gaskets on these three VZEs I'm one of the exceptions because personally I take really good care of this engine I've done everything in my power to do whatever that this engine needs to be done it was leaking coolant uh, before and I could tell when it was leaking coolant because my water pump was actually the wet spot the wet spot was literally my where the area where my water pump is at and my thermostat I replaced that and it's not it's no longer leaking coolant this car was also leaking oil and it was not the head gaskets fault uh, it was actually my valve cover gaskets which is actually over here you might not see it but where the oil cap is at that's where my valve cover gasket is at I also I also went to replace the passenger side which by the way it's not really the most charming thing to do because you got to take out the intake manifold you got to take you got to take the throttle body out you got to do everything just to get to the passenger side valve cover gaskets but I did replace those and this car is running in tip-top shape so this engine in my opinion is a pretty darn reliable engine and we all know Toyota's and a lot of Toyota, we all know Toyota for being known as rely, reliable cars. I personally think that this is one of the most reliable engines out there. I might sound biased because this is the only Toyota car I actually own myself. But I think that this is okay. I think this is a okay engine. Not the greatest engine out there, not the most powerful engine, but not a terrible engine whatsoever. I think. A lot of people should actually put their two minds together and give this engine a second thought because I personally think that this engine does have the potential to be a great engine not the greatest but a good engine and as far as the valve cover uh, not the valve cover the head gaskets it's probably you guys are not taking good care of your own cars and you're just you're just neglecting them 
and I understand not everybody is a car guy. Not every, not everybody knows every, anything about cars. But at least get to know your car, because when you, whenever you do fix up your, whenever you have a mechanic fix up your car, they will not rip you off with nonsense. And that's how, how my engine is running still in tip-top shape, despite having an AC problem. But you really don't really the car doesn't really need AC just to drive. So those are my thoughts of the Toyota 3 VZE. Not the greatest engine, but a okay engine. And this has potential to be a great engine. That's all for now. Talk to you guys again soon.